right, so I thought we would start today um, talking about this question about uh, what is place value and why it's important. Uh, this is a really key mathematical concept and I don't always think caregivers are, are paying attention to it. So I'm gonna start by just showing a little bit about place value and then we can chat about it, um, about why it's important. So I'm gonna share my screen here. All right, give me one sec. All right, so if you are watching my screen, uh, you can see that I have the number 478. And the idea of place value is really what defines our number system. So truly 478, when kids are starting, they just see three numbers, but the concept behind that is that I have uh, and my slides are not moving. Now we go. Is that I have 400 and then I have 70 and then I have eight. And that number, 478, uh, when I, as I first wrote it, is all this combined. And that's a really important mathematical idea. All the way to also then understanding that what I have is four of the 100s, I have seven of the tens, I have eight more. And that goes all the way to this kind of a series that where I can combine the number and think about it in terms of this exponentials for the place that for the tens, powers of tens, which are key mathematical idea. So I don't think, so this is a quick definition for us to start talking about uh, place value, but truly a lot of what we teach kids in the early grades it only works because of this. We do things the way we do because our number system is designed in this way. So helping kids understand numbers in this way is really key. So I, um, I'm gonna add a little bit. Paolo, if you pull up that, can you pull up that last slide? Sure, that has everything on it. I think is underappreciated about the numeration system. First of all, it's like a miracle of human invention. And, um, and it took off because it was so good, right? There used to be these other numeration systems like Roman numerals that were all additive. And what's really important about the numeration system that we use is that it's both additive and multiplicative. And so in the early years, you're really functioning as much as anything with that additive element. Um, but you have to work towards that multiplicative element um, in second grade so that towards third grade, kids are really getting the multiplicative element to it. But, it, but it's a tricky system and a really powerful system that allows you to name every single number with just 10 digits, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So yeah, it's, it's I just wanted to honor um, the fact that it is both additive and multiplicative and that that's what makes it such a special system. And that's why um, it took off um, in the Hindu, it's called the Hindu Arabic uh, numeration system uh, because it started in that area. I think the Arabians started it and then the Hindus, um, Indians were the ones who sent it on its way um, mm -hmm. and, and, and culturally, um, but it's, it's really powerful. Yeah. So in the early grades, sorry, Jessica, go ahead. I just wanted to say that I appreciate that conversation too, especially in the historic context, because even in other number systems, I and mean, if you think about it, what's fascinating about our, our, our current system is that 10 is being used as, as a unit. So it's this whole idea that we can, we, we can, we can do things with not just you know ones, but we can also do things with ten, and that whole idea that ten, in and of itself, is a unit that we can that we can operate with both additively and both multiplicatively, and how how people come to yeah. understand and do that, I think, is fascinating. So, how do we help kids start thinking that way? I think that's a question for caregivers, right? Because the goal is to help young kids so they learn to count and they learn to write numbers and initially that's kind of just procedural memorized but we want them to start thinking that way so how do we help how can we help kids start thinking that way and making sense of the system in this way that we are talking about 
It's a big question, but I think one of the most important ways to do that is to de-emphasize the language that we use and, and upphasize the mathematics underneath the language. So when I'm talking with teachers of kindergarten children, um, I ask them instead of counting 10, 20, 30, 40, when they're learning to count by tens to do exactly what Jessica's talking about is sort of honoring the fact that they're counting in units of 10. So I say, I'd rather have you practice one ten, two tens, three tens, four tens, five tens, six tens, and then you can layer the language on top of it. Uh, every language has a different way of calling that, but in every language, what it means is one ten, two tens, three tens, four tens. And a lot of kids get lost because they think every new number is a novel thing forever. Uh, but when I can wrap around a 10, I start to realize that the system just keeps going around and around and around. So I think that's one simple way that you can start by uh, when you say the number 23, just remind kids, well, that's two tens and three ones. Um, so just as a habit, you're pointing out that, that understructure of, of a numeral and the number it represents. Yeah, or asking them. You know, so as you're walking and you are seeing numbers at house numbers or when I grew up, it was bus line numbers or, uh -huh. you know, every time there was this question, okay, what number is that? How many tens? How many ones? Well, you know, or, or that kind of question. I think at, ha at, ha at home, that really helps. Well, and I think related to that at home, something else that you can do is to think about the different ways that you can decompose a number. So if you see that number, like the number that Paola just showed, 478, that, that kids can think about it as, as yes, the 400s, the seven tens, and the eight ones, but they also think about it the way that Valerie has written on her board there. They're thinking about it as 47 tens and eight ones, or 478 ones, right. uh, because then that is why we're able to do all these awesome things that we can do in our numeration system when we ungroup and regroup numbers, when we're um, doing, um, operations with numbers. And well, that relates to uh, something really important that's related to, but not exactly place value, but this idea that numbers can be written in different forms all the time and they can be, and so, you know, I would ask the question, sure, a $10 bill is awesome, but if I'm, if I want a soda and I'm going past a soda machine, a $10 bill doesn't do me any good. I want that $10 in the form of 10 ones. And so thinking about in this situation, what form do we want the number in? What form do we want our money in? What form do we want, you know, this numeral in for this situation um, is related to that, being able to go back and forth and thinking of numbers in different forms. But then there is the other way around too. Uh, I think Valerie, there is the efficiency of the $10 bill. Right. You know, and if I'm walking around with 10 ones, I can lose a one. I have to keep track. Do I really have 10? But Depends when I have a $10 bill, it's very efficient. So our number system is very efficient that way. So helping kids also build that, that efficiency, right? Wow, that's super efficient. I can now say this is 110 or this is 100. Yeah, have to be but I, I would argue that efficiency is contextually based. So if I'm going to the state fair, it's way less efficient to have a hundred dollar bill. Sure. Right. So I think that, you know, it's all it's a mathematical efficiency. It's <laughs> right. But, but yeah, that's just one little level. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so I think that what I was trying to say, it goes both ways. Sorry, Jessica, go ahead. Yeah, oh, that's okay. I just wanted to comment, but I also, I think what I hear are two basic themes right now, and one is around this whole idea of flexibility in terms of composing and decomposing. So there's a difference between a child who looks at, you know, maybe even the number 17 and saying, you know, well, I know that 17 is composed of a, a 10 and a seven, and then, okay, so how else can you compose it and decompose it? And, you know, well, there is no other way, <laughs> maybe for, for that student right? at that point in time versus the flexibility of being able to bust that number up and put it back together, right? That's really what we're saying with compose and decompose, busting numbers up and putting them back together and being flexible with that 
And then there's the other piece of the conversation is really around like context and even even strategic thinking. Like, you know, well, what would it make sense to walk down the street with ten one dollar bills or a ten dollar bill or so, something along those lines? Of, well, what you know, what makes the most sense in that situation? Well, and I thought you were going to say the second one, so I'm going to add a third thing, which is uh, Paula's idea of efficiency. So in yeah. the end. Math, the aesthetic around mathematics is that we can do things what mathematics mathematicians call elegantly, right? Oh. So that if we do things in a sort of beautifully efficient way, that that's, there's an artistry to that, that I think that caregivers uh, and people who haven't come to enjoy mathematics don't appreciate. Um, and I think teachers are trying to help kids to see um, what's the most efficient um, as well. So I think that's that's definitely a part of that whole conversation too. Yeah, I and definitely don't think they're false. Like it, it's, it's, it's this whole idea that like, it's, it's not a dichotomy. It's, not, it's both of them. Exactly. Right. And the beauty and it goes both, both ways, right? We yeah. want kids to be able to go both ways. And I, I appreciate you, Valerie, saying the other is efficient in a different context. And maybe yeah. that is the efficiency. The efficiency is being able to understand well, here I better think about 10 ones, but here it's really powerful that I can think of it as one 10. And it, that is maybe the efficiency, truly. Well, and uh, honoring Temple's background there, I think that you really see that with geometry. I know we're talking about numeration system and place value, but you see that with geometry. Sometimes it's helpful to see a shape uh, as fully composed and sometimes it's helpful to drop a, 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 a you know a line down and see it as two pieces you know depending on what proof you're working on or whatever i don't want to get too esoteric but but that habit of mind of thinking about what's the best for me in this situation i think is a mathematical habit of mind right and i was going to add at this related to this notion of efficiency is that you know, as a caregiver, a caregiver might perceive what they see their child doing is not efficient, but it may, it's sometimes efficiency is relative, relative to the child, especially as they're making sense of the mathematics. And oftentimes if they're making sense of it in a conceptual way, then down the road, that's gonna really pay off in terms of efficiency because they'll be able to decompose and recompose numbers very efficiently, even in their mind doing mental math, so. Right, which you don't do if you only memorize. If you only know 478, that's 478 is 470 and eight, later it doesn't pay off. Yeah, if anything, right. I think that becomes the danger of trying to um, move toward, like it's to build off what Temple's saying, if we have a student who's really thinking hard about these ideas, but perhaps are, are not coming forward with the most efficient ideas that we might like want to see, so to speak, is that bad? And for me, no, it's not. Because again, it's we, we move along this continuum. And if the child's really heavily engaged in thinking hard about these ideas and making sense, that's going to lead toward and support and build up that efficiency later. So I think at, at home, all these compose and decompose questions are great questions to be asking kids. You know, as early as they understand four. <laughs> You know, that's where they are in their number system. Even then, you can start with some of composing and decomposing, which now we are not talking about place value anymore, you know, in a way. Uh, but, you know, throughout, as they're developing their num understanding of numbers, asking these kinds of questions of the kids at home, how many different ways can you do that? And, and they can get pretty sophisticated over time. It sounds pretty simple when we are talking about early grades, but later on, it, composing and decomposing gets sophisticated. I love Temple's point because I think what it does is it points out a little bit who we are, right? We're people who uh, have long come to understand math pretty well and we've taught kids math, um, but it's math with child development together. So um, doing the most efficient, the most efficient thing first doesn't always take into account the child development. And we have to think about what does the kid need to play with to be able to gain power with these ideas. Um, and so that's why, like Temple mentioned, that sometimes the work that children are doing in place value doesn't seem efficient. 
but it's you got to go through that in order to be efficient when we get into the thousands and ten thousands and millions and nanoseconds and you know um you have to have done that work deeply so that you can keep it with you when you go to more abstract levels well i i do have a, an issue that is related but I do have a problem sometimes, and maybe you, you don't think it's a problem, but sometimes I see kids that have developed, they have built that understanding, they have built that efficiency, and sometimes I feel like we are asking them to do something that's really basic, they already know, and we can, we keep sometimes also pushing keeps kids backward. Mm -hmm. I see it in, in the classroom a lot. You know, so I think understanding the kid is key. If you are actually understanding it, we need to move forward. And I don't need you to tell me a hundred times that 478 is 400 for 70 plus eight, because you already got that. So what are the new questions to ask? Uh, that's also key to, you know, keep building on, on that mathematics. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, how do we want to conclude our conversation for today? <laughs> well, I would say we've got plenty of things we can pick, pick up on, but let's conclude first by each giving sort of a, a tip. Let's see if we can do that. I'll go last because that because uh, I don't want to put I don't want to I don't want to take anybody's answer. <laughs> I can still come up with one. Um, I'll start. Um, I think giving kids opportunities to you know build out pen and work with pens and to i'll just throw in that we didn't really i don't think got into this a lot today but you know, maybe it's something for next time but giving kids an opportunity to actually um build out 10 you know some and connect make those connections between maybe you know different mathematical tools that they may be using to to support their thinking and connecting that to numerals um I could see that being, you know, counting, you know, counting, counting collections, counting everything, finding different ways to, to count things and group things and, and express that with, with uh, number sentences would be uh, fundamental to that. Mm -hmm. um, um, go Tampo. Well, I was going to say my tip just in terms of caregivers would be just any opportunity that you have to ask, you know, you're in the car and the, and you see a number on a sign or you see so many cows in the field or whatever it may be. And then you can ask them, well, how all the, what are the different ways that you can make 37? And then that could lead to more, you know, in-depth conversations about, again, decomposition of number, but then making sure you're paying attention to trying to do that even around thinking about tens and ones and, and so forth. I was going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> so now that people said it, the other thing that I was thinking is that finding different ways to help them represent it, you know, these numbers and these quantities and the grouping and ungrouping is really important and it can be with, you know, ties that come together and groups or et cetera. However, I think money is a complicated one when it comes to try to build this kind of thinking. So you have to be careful, especially when the kids are um, um, are be beginning to learn all this because it's hard to see. For example, I know we were talking 110 is 10 ones, but in money, it's really hard to see because the 10 note is exactly like the other ones. It's not bigger. It doesn't show 10 one notes together. So early on, money is a, I mean, I know we talked about money, but in terms of representation, you have to be careful with money, especially early on. Young kids. Early on, you want the kids to see, oh, okay, I see the size of 110 and then 10 ones. There is something there that I can switch. Yeah, no, that's really true. Once kids understand that they rather have a $10 bill than a $1 bill and they understand yeah. that. And that's something else because you've got yeah. monetary value. So I'm going to go with a counting tip. So um, I mentioned one earlier where when you're counting by tens to name them, one ten, two tens, three tens, four tens. And I'll also say one thing that maybe you don't think about is that whenever you 
past nine, you have to, something important, really important happens. You run out of digits. So you could count, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh my gosh, we've run out of digits. <laughs> we have to start over. One, ten. One, one, ten, two, one, ten, three, one, ten, four, one, ten, five, one, ten, six, one, ten, seven, one, ten, eight, one, ten, nine. Ah, we run out of digits again. <laughs> two tens. And so you actually make a big deal out of it and have it be kind of laborious because you want them to really internalize that pattern. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I got to start over. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I would have you count in a way that really elaborates on this, this uh, circular pattern that's built into the, the system.